So in this video, we'll be looking at the structure and function of neurons, the com communicating cell of the nervous system. And so we'll start by talking about the characteristics of a neuron. These are large, complex cells, um, and their job is to transmit signals via um, a, a nerve impulse. And we'll talk more about nerve impulses uh, later but uh, we'll talk about them as action potentials. So they're able to transmit an action potential from one part of the body to another along the axon of the neuron. These are very long-lived cells. They have a very long lifespan. And once they're fully developed, they are not capable of uh, reproduction. So we talk about them as being amitotic. So they do not undergo mitosis. And so that's the downside to that is that they cannot be replaced if they're killed. So once we mature, once the brain is fully mature, for instance, then we do not add any more neurons to it, and any neurons that are damaged enough to kill them cannot be replaced. They have a very high metabolic rate. They process a lot of ATP. And so in order to make all that ATP, they must have a continuous and abundant, you know, copious supplies of both glucose and oxygen. And uh, so here we have an electron micrograph of a neuron. We'll be looking at the different parts of the neuron soon. Um, and then this is just a drawing showing a neuron. And, and uh, what they're not showing here is that uh, the axon portion can be very, very long. So we'll be talking about all these different parts of the neuron. Now, most neurons have three functional components in their uh, structure. The first is that they have a receptive region, a part of them that is capable of picking up information, receiving sensory data, or some other kind of, of input um, to them. They have a conducting portion so there's a long axon that is able to transmit this long uh, distance nerve impulse called an action potential. And they have a secretory region at the very end of that axon that will release a chemical called a neurotransmitter when it receives that action potential at the very tip of the axon. So now while neurons can show a lot of variety in their structure, all of them have a portion of them called a cell body, and all of them have one or more of these things called processes that extend from the cell body. And so, you know, when I draw my kind of neuron, it usually looks something like this. And this portion here is the cell body and these are the processes. So this process here is referred to as an axon, A-X-O-N, we'll look more at those in a moment. And these processes here are referred to as dendrites. So um, cell body and then processes that extend from the cell body. So when I use that term processes, I mean like an extension, not um, like a, a set of activities or behaviors. Okay, so receptive region that picks up information coming into the cell body, a conducting component, component that leaves the cell body and then down at the tip of that conducting, conducting component, we have a secretory region that releases neurotransmitters. Okay, so let's take a look at the cell body first. The cell body is where, um, is the, you know, when we looked at neurons in chapter 5, when we were studying uh, the tissues of the body, it was the cell body that we were looking for that really helped us to, to find uh, an individual neuron. The cell body can also be called the soma. Soma is Latin for body. Or perikaryon. Um, two other terms for it. Um, most of the cell bodies that are found in the nervous system are located within the central nervous system, 
So the brain and spinal cord are made up of huge numbers of cell bodies and neurons with cell bodies. Um, there are cell bodies located outside of the central nervous system. We'll see those in a minute. Um, they contain a single large uh, spherical nucleus and inside the nucleus are very obvious nucleoli. There may be multiple nucleoli. Here in this one we can see the nucleus here with its very dark staining nucleolus. They have a very granular cytoplasm with all the usual organelles with the exception of centrioles. So this is one organelle that neurons do not have. And they don't have them, and because they don't have them, they can't do cell division. Part of what makes the uh, nissel, uh, the, the cytoplasm look so granular is that it contains these uh, structures called nissel bodies. Nissel bodies are just uh, these clusters of rough endoplasmic reticulum, and they give the cell body sort of a grayish color that's, that's unique to neurons. So there's lots and lots of endoplasmic reticulum, and that relates directly to all of the secretion that uh, neurons do. And then finally, um, if you see a cluster of cell bodies that are all together in the central nervous system, we refer to that cluster as a nucleus. Nuclei would be the plural. If that cluster of cell bodies is found in the peripheral nervous system or related to the PNS, then we talk about that cluster as a ganglion or a bunch of them, they're ganglia. And so there are these little clusters of cell bodies that, uh, that are found scattered throughout the peripheral portions of the body as well. Okay, so there's the cell body. What we're going to look at next then is some of the processes that extend from the cell body. And the first we're going to look at are the dendrites. Dendrites are the uh, processes that bring information to the cell body. And so here we can see the cell body. Here are, the, here are a bunch of dendrites that are extending from the cell body. Here again, cell body, and you can see the branching dendrites um, that extend from the cell body. So they are relatively short but very branched processes. And they serve as the receptive surface. They receive signals from other neurons or from sensory structures that are out there in the peripheral nervous system. And they bring information into the cell body in the form of what's called a local depolarization. So we'll make some more sense of that in another, um, in another video. But they can bring this local depolarization to the cell body. So those are the dendrites. They're the input region of the neuron. The axon is part of the output region, and it's a single slender process of the cell body. So if this is the cell body here, and you can see the nucleus inside, and you can see all the dendrites that are sticking out from it, and they branch and branch and branch, and then here's a single long extension. That's the axon. And it conducts information away from the cell body, and it does it in the form of this thing called an action potential. And we have not described that yet, but we're going to make some sense of that eventually. And the action potential arises from a region called the axon hillock. It's right here just before, you know, right where the, um, the axon is, is arising from the cell body. We can see it here. There's the axon hillock. In, this, um, in the second picture, the bottom picture. Um, and that axon hillock is just this little conical mound of the, of the cell body. Now these axons may be very short or very long depending on the cell. In fact, the longest ones uh, would have their cell bodies located right up near the spine. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, take that back. They have their cell bodies inside the spinal cord and the axon runs all the way down the length of the leg and out to the toes. So there is the longest of the axons of a neuron. And uh, they can also be very, very short. And they may form what are called collaterals. Those are branches along the axon. So if there was another 
you know, another extension that branched off here and another one here. Those would be collaterals, just branches that allow the cell body to make um, almost connections. Those are the synapses with multiple cells. We're going to describe synapses as well. And at the very tips, the axons branch extensively, and they form what are called axon terminals. And each of the little branches ends with this bulbous synaptic knob. And the synaptic knob ends near the receptive surface of the next neuron in a chain or the receptive surface of the muscle. So we've talked about the neuromuscular junction. Um, and that is where the synaptic knob comes very close but doesn't touch the muscle. And then there are also, um, they can end near a gland, a cell from a gland. And those two cells, they're the synaptic synapse, they are separated from each other by a very, very thin uh, little bit of extracellular fluid um, that fills the synaptic cleft. All right, so dendrites bring information in, axons carry information away from the cell body. So if we were to look at or, and try to classify um, neurons based on their structure, there are three different structural types of neurons. The first is, and, and, and they're all based on the number of processes that are found extending from the cell body. So the first of them is referred to as a multipolar neuron. It's one that has one axon and at least two dendrites. So we've got uh, three, at minimum three extensions and maximum huge numbers. It's just hard to even talk about how many because they are very variable. And they are the most common of the neuron types in the body. And they are the primary neuron type found in the central nervous system. And that's why they're so common. It's because, it's because uh, the central nervous system has just astronomical numbers of neurons. And many of those, or most of them, are um, multipolar neurons. And they have functional uh, roles as either association or motor neurons. And we'll describe those the functional classifications next. That's what's coming after we talk about the structural classification. So if there's a whole bunch of processes extending from the cell body, like we see in this picture and in this picture, then we refer to it as a multipolar neuron. Bipolar neurons have only two extensions from them, two processes. One of them is an axon, one of them is a dendrite, and they usually are found on opposite sides of the cell body. And they are relatively uncommon in the body. They are found only in a few of the special sense organs. So in the retina, the um, sensory neurons that receive light information and translate it into an electrical signal, um, they are bipolar neurons. The olfactory cells that you find in the uh, smelling parts of the nose and uh, the sensory neurons that connect the inner ear, uh, especially where we uh, coordinate or, or receive information about balance, those are also bipolar neurons. And so here's an example of a bipolar neuron. Here's the cell body in this region. You have the dendrite extending in one direction, the axon hillock, and we can't see it in this image, but there would also be an axon extending from the axon hillock. And so that's a bipolar neuron. And then the third type of structural classifications uh, would be the unipolar neuron. And as the name suggests, there's only one process, and it's a short one, that extends from the cell body. So there's the process. And then when it, it tees very quickly into, a, uh, into two processes, one to the right and one to the left, the peripheral process functions as a dendrite. It brings information toward where the cell body is found. And the central process is what we call the efferent, um, the efferent process that carries information away from the cell body. And it functions as an axon. And um, these are sensory neurons that are found in uh, the periphery of the body. They are primarily unipolar neurons. 
all the cell bodies are clustered together into a ganglia, and then the um, the peripheral and central processes. The central process heads toward the CNS, brings info in the form of an action potential to the CNS, hence it's the central process, while the peripheral process brings information in from the periphery of the body. So I'll not write that down, but I'm sure you've got what I'm talking about here. And so in this image that I've got here, this is the cell body, and um, these are the, uh, I'm not sure which direction those are carrying, but that's one of the, or, or part of the um, process there. Okay, so three kinds of neurons, the multipolar, bipolar, and unipolar neurons based on how many processes extend from the cell body. And then we can think about them also from a functional standpoint. So what are they doing? And again, we have three uh, kinds of neurons that we can cluster them into three types. There are sensory neurons. These act as afferent neurons. They bring information toward the central nervous system. Um, and the dendrites generally of these sensory neurons are found, and, and these are the ones that are primarily the um, unipolar style. So here up near the, um, the spinal cord, there's a ganglion here. So there's a cluster of cell bodies, and they include these sensory receptors down here at the toe, let's say, where the person is stepping on attack. Here is the peripheral process bringing information toward the cell body. Here is the central process found in the lower back that is bringing information into the spinal cord. So that's a sensory, sensory neuron. It's bringing sensation from the periphery to the central nervous system. And they generally have very long dendrites and just a short axon that doesn't have to travel very far to find its way to the spinal cord or to the brain. Okay, so there's our sensory neuron. Motor neurons, they carry information from the central nervous system out to the effector tissues, telling the effector tissues that it's time to either contract or to secrete. And um, I'm not sure why that is in there, so we'll scratch that out. Um, the cell bodies are usually found inside the central nervous system. So here's the cell body for our um, motor neuron. Um, except, you know, the only the exception to that is some of the uh, autonomic nervous system neurons. And they generally have very short dendrites and a super long axon that carries. So the dendrites would be here inside the spinal cord and then the axon moves out and uh, most of these are multipolar neurons. And so th with these motor neurons, they've got their um, cell body found in the central nervous system, and then the axon leaves the central nervous system and gets bundled together to be a nerve um, in that, that, that's out in the periphery of the body. If you can hear noise in the background, it's my daughter deflating a uh, an air mattress, so sorry about that. I'll be over in just a minute. Um, hmm. I seem to be missing... Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I am missing the, um, the slide about the interneuron. So I'll just say a couple of things about the interneuron here. And, um, and then, uh, We'll, we'll use the motor neuron slide to, to look at it, but interneurons are also known as association neurons. These are neurons that are found um, wholly in the central nervous system. Interneurons, they are only in the CNS. And um, they transmit signals between neurons. So 
they have they synapse with a neuron at either end, like we see here. So here's an interneuron in the uh, spinal cord, and they transmit signals between two neurons. Hence the name interneuron. Um, and so they can connect, they can be in pathways then that connect sensory neurons to motor neurons. And they tend to be multipolar neurons with very short dendrites and uh, the axon may be long or short. So in the case of this one here in the spinal cord, it's a fairly short axon. Um, and they make up about 90% of the neurons in the body are these interneurons. Okay, so now um, neurons are one component of the cells of the nervous system, but they are not the only cells that are found there. Neuroglia are another type of cells, and these are, as we mentioned in the introduction, these are the support cells of the neurons. And we will look at neuroglia in the next uh, video. So uh, we'll come back to this slide then. Sorry about that. And uh, yep, I think that's everything that we got to say. So again, thinking about neurons, three uh, structural classifications, the multipolar, bipolar, and unipolar. They're composed, uh, you know, based on their, the number of processes. The processes include dendrites, which receive information, and axons that carry information away from the cell body. And then finally, uh, there are three functional types. There are sensory neurons that bring information toward the nerve, central nervous system, and there are peripheral nervous system, uh, neurons that carry information away from the central nervous system, motor commands. And then in between, there are the bulk of the neurons in the body, more than 90%, and those are the interneurons or association neurons, neurons that uh, communicate from neuron to neuron. And they are found entirely within the central nervous system. Okay, we'll see you next uh, in the next lecture about neuroglia. Thank you.